the basics of this video are pretty short and sweet so it's probably not going to be a long video um, one of the common questions is if you're giving away everything including education and you know the basic necessities of life and housing which we're not technically giving away we're allowing people an opportunity to earn them but that's a different story in a different video um, but if you're giving all this stuff away how come you're not giving away free health care and the short answer is because if you gave it away free, every time somebody got a hangnail, they'd be running to the hospital and they'd overload your system. That's been proven time and again throughout history. Um, you know, it, it goes back to blanket solutions and how blanket solutions will always fail to, to, to rectify, um, never mind overcome complex and systemic challenges. So, um, what the the healthcare system that is foreseen for the future it's not in the immediate budget because again that's going to be a, a constant liability like the educational institutions but the educational institutions are required even in the early stages of operations so um, they are an expense that can be managed whereas the healthcare system would be far too grand to to even think about funding in the early stages as the program reaches economic maturity those programs will be implemented um, as, as investment accounts can be established for the funding of those systems. The, the healthcare system in itself will be operated under the basis of a copay, so each person will have a minor copay. And if, you know, if the average cost is going to be $1,000, which is pretty outrageous for here in the Philippines, um, to be quite honest, but just for the sake of simple numbers, you would have perhaps a 2% copay. It looks to be at, with the current economic situation, about 2% would be sufficient for the copay. Um, primarily because your staff and your operational expenses are going to be covered. Um, we're hoping that we can get some cooperation with medicines and whatnot. That remains to be seen. Um, but either way, the actual cost of operations for the hospital, the staff, the equipment would of course be you know, bought and paid for at one time and then operation, operational expenses in far as, as far as the daily oversight and management of the, of the medical facilities, um, be they clinics or full-scale full hospitals, will be provided for through strategic, through, through strategic investments that um, are established precisely to provide a sufficient level of funding to, to maintain operational expenses for a facility. Um, so with the copay in place, we believe we can get away with that. And that's basically basically why we don't give away free health care, because we don't want to overload the system. At, but at the same time, how we're going to prevent um, you know abuses of the system from within as well. Um, there won't be any hedge funds owning the hospitals and cutting out ICU beds, so there's a shortage. Um, the ICU beds, it was not that they were all full because um, of disease, it was because the number of ICU beds had been so greatly reduced by the, the hedge funds and large investment firms that owned them previously. So that's one of the, one of the many areas where we can, we can avoid um, a lot of the cost overruns and a lot of the, the um, ambiguous waste, if you will that is commonly associated with healthcare and medical industry. So um, while it may not be an ideal system given the current circumstances and the current socioeconomic and sociopolitical systems that we're working within, um, we do believe that it will be viable and sustainable. So if you have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to let me know and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment below.